Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics and welcome back to another Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage unboxing video. My name is Trevor Ursulescu, owner of Monster Hobbies Online, which you can check out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. So this is another Christmas present that I did get for 2022, and we can bring in the new year for 2023. Hopefully that's going good for you, because this is the following week video. Now, I have reviewed the other Mobius Hudson model. That was the Hudson Hornet Special, and you can check out that video coming across just up here if you like. But for today, we are going to see the Hudson Hornet Club Coupe, which is another amazing model from Mobius. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench where Danny the Dog and myself will be taking a look at this great model. Now we wind the clock all the way back to 1954 as we once again visit the Hudson Hornet showroom with our Club Coupe from Mobius Models. This is a 125th scale plastic model kit for skill level 3, ages 15 and up. And what I like about this box top is it looks exactly like the old promotional artwork for the actual car. And I do think they did take this from some of the old uh, brochures and just added in the Mobius stuff down below. On this side of the box we see the car with the hood up. And there's that wonderful Hudson Twin H motor, which you also see here, the Mobius emblem and the barcode. It says accurately styled engine and dash decals, ultra detailed 308 cubic inch Twin H power six cylinder engine. And these wire wheels on the side are actually old Kelsey Hayes wire wheels, which were quite popular back in the day. On this side of the box, we get more features. We have a detailed interior, pad printed white wall tires, Chrome wire wheels, again the Kelsey Hayes, authentic, authentically styled 54 Hudson body. Again, a really wonderful model from Mobius. This is number 1213 in case you want to order one. Now let's remove the lid of our model and see what's in the box. Now I just pulled the shrink wrap off, so this may be a little difficult. Oh, not too bad. All right, now first thing we get to see in here is all the wonderful chrome components. Again, really wonderful. They are protected with a little bit of paper in between, so nothing scrapes. There's all our glass right there, the wonderful body and underpan as well. Nope, the interior bucket's not in there. Then we have those pad printed wheels and tires. Tires. There's our interior and our lowered chassis here. And then we have more chrome components. Here we've got our engine and the hood in, and the dashboard. It's all in this bag. And then as we pull through, we again have more seats, probably the front seat. We have an alternate dashboard there, so we're really going to have to look at the instructions and see which goes with where. Then we have our decal sheet, which we'll look at in a little later. And the instructions, and that will be a Danny the Dog kind of job. Same with our decals. Again, full color. That's what makes Mobius so great. Hello, hello again. Shaboom and hoping we'll meet again. So, life can be a dream in your 54 Hudson Hornet Club Coupe. So today we're going to be looking at this wonderful instruction sheet. And the one thing I really love about the Mobius models is you get the entire instruction sheet in color. And I really hope that more and more model kit manufacturers will take this lead and give us some color instruction sheets. So let's open this thing up and take a look at what's inside. Now as we fold the instruction sheet open just underneath the image of the Hudson, we have the important read this first here and the tips on painting your kit and the decal application and the keys to the parts. The keys to the part, if it's a circle with a number, that's a plastic part. If it's square, it's a decal. Anyway, this is all helpful and you can read it at your own leisure. Here in panel one, we get our Flathead Hudson Twin H Power Engine. This thing is really, really wonderful, just like in the Hudson Special. So we have the cylinder head, the right and left hand side engine block with the transmission on it, our oil and transmission pan, as well as the front timing chain and water pump. And then we also have our belts and pulley and our fan. And then in panel 1B, we get the dual carburetors with the dual ex uh, intake manifold, pardon me, the exhaust manifold, the carburetor ventilation tubes, 
our oil filter and all the little ingredients in here. And then there's our generator going on as well as a fuel pump up here. Then down here we've got our air cleaners in two pieces, or actually three pieces going together. Throttle linkage and the exhaust manifold extension. And then we got our decals here, which is the twin H-Power decal. Just to make this thing look really, really nice. Carrying on to panel two, we have the wheel and axle assemblies. So you're going to do this four times. You push the wheel into the tire. Now, I know that can be uh, really exhausting, but uh, actually it's quite easy. So then we get the brake backing plate, the spindle, and the axle pin, which all push into the wheel and tire assembly. Might need a little touch of crazy glue, but be very careful you don't actually glue all this together as a solid. That's not good. Then we've got our rear axle up and down, top and bottom, as well as the brake backing plates in here. Panel 3 shows our chassis being put together. And it says, please note, exhaust pipes and drive shaft both pass through an oval hole in the rear cross member of the frame. So that would be in here somewhere. Okay, anyway, there's our chassis pan and a cross member being put in place. This is the step down frame, which actually gave the car a lower stance. It was also a unibody car, which is really interesting for the era. Then uh, we've got the axle, metal axle going through here, attaching our wheels together. There's cross members, there's shock absorbers, a fully loaded front axle assembly with the upper and lower A arms. We also have a brake master cylinder gluing in here. All kinds of groovy stuff. Panel 4 shows our interior going together. It actually has this little box up here, which kind of goes into panel 3, but that's okay. So it shows our dashboard here, and then the instrument cluster, as well as this piece here, which I... I'm, oh, that's our heater, it says. Okay, and then we got our steering wheel, and then down here... Oh, that's because these are the decals going on. Okay, this is a decal application panel. So then here we've got our dashboard going together. The heater glues up underneath the dashboard. Steering wheel glues onto the steering column. There's a little uh, icon in the center of the steering wheel for where the horn is. Uh, actually, the horn is on a ring. Anyway, yeah, it's first thing in the morning, so I'm a little bit, uh, you know, not with it. So here's our door panels, which are nice. They're molded separately, just like the 50 Oldsmobile and the 51 Chevy model kits that are on the channel as well. There's the seat back, which goes into place, and the front seat also has a back, and you put on the handles here. So again, very nicely done. Oh, we got our pedal cluster there as well. Now we're going to do two panels together here. So we've got our install engine panel, and that shows with the completed chassis and interior setup, the engine will hook in here and connect onto the drive shaft. Then you've got your radiator with the upper radiator hose and a bunch of decals going in there. And then we have our entire firewall assembly with the horns right and left, the windshield wipers in here, as well as a whole bunch of decals. Now, panel six gets into our body being glued together. So here we've got our rear bumper and the rear valance. Our taillight lenses all gluing in place. There's a separate gas filler door, which is really cool. You could leave that kind of half open if you had this at a gas station as a diorama. There's all our glass windows going in as well as the sun visors. And then it looks like, yeah, our firewall assembly from up here will glue up underneath. And then the windshield wipers come down. And we've got our grill as well as the front bumper and our headlights and a whole ton of decals. And at the bottom of our instruction sheet is the final assembly, step 7. So here we have the hood going down with the hood ornament, our battery, and again there's more under hood decals. There are the hood hinge props, as well as the hood hinges down here. And then we've got our license plates being glued in place. And you put all this onto that completed body and chassis and engine assembly. It says option 2 license plates are included as options. If you desire to add a license plate to the vehicle, what's it saying here? Apply decal before attaching it to the bumper. All oh, right. It looks like Danny the dog needs some glasses maybe. Now we get into the best part of this instruction sheet and I'll get Trevor to help me move this up here. We have the full color full paint guide reference sheet. So here we've got under the hood 
and it shows you all the decals where they are supposed to go and then it shows you like on a black car this is what it would look like under there here's the upholstery colors and how they all fit together and then you've got the underneath shot here showing you like how everything goes in they also have all the notes so that you can see just how this is supposed to go together like over here it says Note the subtle weathering on various metal parts of the chassis, which provide a realistic appearance to the model's underside. So let's just get Trevor to push this up here. So in these panels, you can see the dashboard, how it looks, as well as the cowl, and then our twin H power engine. And down here is like the decal for the trunk lid and the license plate, as well as all this other. And it says, Note that this build-up utilizes a custom color scheme. See page 6 for a detailed list of historically accurate Hudson Hornet factory paint schemes. So let's do that next. Now the nice thing is Mobius included it right on the back. So here it's suggested paint colors. You got your fan belts, radiator hoses, and hoses on the heater box in flat rubber. You got the flat black parts, the burnt iron parts, semi-gloss black, gloss yellow, steel, chrome, silver, wood. Interior panels under grab bars on seat backs, really cool. And your tail lights, upholstery. Oh, let, let's go over here. Body colors it says the 54 Hudson Hornet Club Coupe body came in a variety of factory colors, including some striking two tone versions. Although you may wish to paint your Club Coupe in a custom color of your own choosing, those desiring historical accuracy may refer to the following list. Well, that's me, that's me. Original Hudson factory paint codes have been provided along with the corresponding D uh, Ditzler code. There are many automotive paint sources that provide historical matching colors. So here they all are. Beret, blue, poly, palm beach, green, Algerian, blue, poly, Roman bronze, silver, blue, ebony, black, royal red, lipstick. Well, that's interesting. Coronation cream, Pacific, blue, green, green gold, Spring Green, St. Clair Gray, Pasture Green, Poly. I wonder what color lipstick is. That's supposed to be like a red or... I mean, <laughs> there's a billion lipstick colors out there. Okay, so down here, we have the upholstery colors as well. And here it says the 54 Hudson Hornet Club Coupe interior consisted of one of three coordinated monotone interiors. Gray, tan, or muted blue. Various shades of each color are used in specific areas of the vehicle interior. Carpet, seats, seats, pleated inserts, and the headliner. And then here we've got the two-tone colors. So, oh, here's where the split is. So 11070 would correspond to something up here. Oh, beret blue poly. And then 11069 is silver blue. So that's all how that works, and it corresponds with the colors up top. So in a little while, Trevor will take a look at the plastic parts, and I will show you the decal sheet toward the end of the video. So until then, toodaloo! All right, Danny, so here we've got the plastic parts for our 54 Hudson. And say, wouldn't this be the perfect car to actually go cruise to the movies back in the 50s and see Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, Danny, we could go together and see that if we are in 54. But for now, we just have to settle for the Disney DVD. Good thing I actually have this. Yeah, I'd say so. All right, so let's take a look at our Hudson here. So if we just flip this up to the side, you can see all the wonderful detail, like the molded-in-place fender skirts. Actually, should be kind of interesting to cut those out a little bit, remove them, but... Wouldn't fit with the style of the car. I don't know if Hudson had that as an option. Should look that up. Anyway, look at the nice chrome trim along the sides. This would be awesome with some bare metal foil going on. You get the nice Hudson script up here in the front fenders, as well as holes for the door handles to go in. Look at all that around the drip rail moldings and everything. There is a little square in here to plug in one of the Hudson symbols. And then there's the nice license plate shroud and trunk lid, you know, latch handle, whatever, <laughs> the twin H power on the script on the side. There's that fuel uh, gas filler with the door missing. So you can leave that open like Danny was saying. Again, lots of great detail on here. Now there are some seam lines that need to be removed like right here. 
There is one notorious one that's on the trunk lid and it is so subtle you won't see it unless you paint it and then it will pop up like you won't believe. Now underneath there are some mold marks in the roof but you can always sand those out or get at them with that number 16 hobby blade. You can see the nice sunken in detail here with the gas filler door. Again, a nice detail which sadly would get glued over. <laughs> but, you know, like my dad used to say, uh, we know it's there. <laughs> so you always got to clean up what you know is there. Anyway, a uh, couple of mold marks up under in the fender wells. But again, you can always scrape those off. Under the hood detail looks really nice. There is another mold line that goes up over here on those front fenders. So always remember just to test it everywhere. Yeah, it goes up along here into the roof. So be up along that seam, comes down here, comes off the top of the fenders, and then drops down, or comes across the trunk, I guess. So make sure that you uh, pay close attention to all those seam lines, get rid of them. But overall, a nice, smooth, clean, crisp body. Next up, we have our chassis pan, and there are mold marks on here, but they will get covered up by the seats, which is a nice saving grace. There's nothing like stuck in the corner on the carpet, thank goodness, because I really hate that with some of those old AMT kits. There's a little spot here for those pedals, and you can see the frame in here for the step down, so that's where a person's feet would be, and they could also rest it on this bar. There is a big fat monogram, or sorry, Mobius logo right between the wheels. This model was made in 2015, made in China designed in the US. Now you might want to scrape some of that down. There is sort of an option here if you wanted to build a trunk. Just cover that over and put a spare tire in here and maybe a wall up here. Something like that for an opening trunk lid. So there's the fuel cell and the spare tire in here. And look at underneath all that nice detail, clean and crisp. Really excellent work. A lot of holes in there for mounting the frame and whatnot. But overall, again, really excellent. And here we have the wonderful Hudson Hornet step-down frame. And this is actually like a unibody. The frame comes across here and then pops out to the sides along the rails and then comes back in right around here. There are some little smaller attaching frames in here. But overall, this is where the bulk is. And that was to drop the interior and the body down. So again, really cool stuff. There are mold marks in here which need to be removed with that number 16 hobby blade. But if we flip it over, you can see all the nice detail Mobius put in here just to make this thing look really wonderful. You've even got the rear bumper kind of frame installed off the back. So again, another great cross brace in to hold the frame together. Really wonderful, wonderful work and A class. Here we have the interior panels for this model kit, and it's always nice when they mold the sides as flat pieces, because then you get wonderful detail on the door handles that make them look like the real deal. This is a 70s GM door handle, but that's okay. You get the general idea. So here we have armrests as well, and look at this nice big fat pleated rear back seat. Again, real nice heft to it. Looks like the real thing. It looks like it would be a really nice comfortable seat. Now if we look on the door panels, you can see all this wonderful detail in here. I do believe that would be chrome, but don't quote me on that. What we need is a, a What It's Like a video from my good friend Justin, where he goes into the car and tells you all the features about it. We need that before we actually get going on this model, or maybe some really good reference photos off of the internet. Now here's our next parts tree, which includes the dashboard. Now, the one thing is this is not the dashboard for the car. We'll see the actual one in a moment. I'm basing it off the decals included. What I'm thinking is this one might be for the Mobius 1951 Hudsons. So I don't have one of those. So when I do get one, we can actually see what's going on. But there's the front bench seat and we've got the firewall, I believe. There's our differential and the drive shaft. It's actually got a three universals on here, one at the back, one in the middle, and one up front. So that would help to get around the uh, step down feature. There's our pedals, as well as the A-arms and that big thick radiator right there, and our shock absorber. So let's just take a look at this up into the camera. Again, such wonderful detail on here. Yeah, I could see Mobius doing some part sharing with this one. 
So that could be the earlier version of the dashboard. Again, really wonderful work if you've got the earlier car. Hmm, maybe I should reuse this footage if I do get the uh, 40 or the 51 Hudson, <laughs> but I don't know. Anyway, so there you go there on the firewall and the back of the radiator. Now we will have to cut off all these little knobby things, so keep in mind where they are as you're cutting them, so you remember where to remove that little bit of uh, plastic. Now here's another little part that makes me think that this might be part of the earlier Hudsons as well, is this sun visor, which seems to be shaped not really for our car, but more for the earlier Hudson, although I could be mistaken on that. So here we have the seat back with the pleats in the center, and we've got our suspension components, like these really long leaf springs, and we've got our uh, front steering that would be our tie rods right there, is what I'm trying to say. Here's our rear exhaust and all the different manifolds. The twin H splitting down into here for the single exhaust. And we've got our heater right in here. So let's bring this up to the camera. We'll start here with the seat back. Again, really nice work. Looks like you could put stuff in those pockets, doesn't it? Look at that sun visor. There's supposed to be a little bit of chrome on here, I do believe. And then there's our springs. Really nice shackles there. <laughs> On the inside, we do have some old marks. I have to remove them off the sun visor. Not so much the back seat here, because that, of course, will be covered over. So now let's take a look at this. So look at that heater with the nice hoses coming up. That would all be aluminum or something like that in there. Again, we need that What's It Like video. So if, Justin, you're watching this, uh, go find that car. <laughs> anyway, there's the underneath. I know he did an earlier Hudson, but I'm not too sure how much of that would be the same. Oh, and by the way, this 54 Hudson was sort of the beginning of American Motors, one of the first acquisi acquisitions when Nash and Hudson merged to form AMC. Now here we have a really interesting parts tree with not too much on it. Oh, and I did find this in the bag. Now this is, <laughs> I don't know what this is, but it's really tiny, so I gotta make sure I don't lose it. Now here's the dashboard that is supposed to come in for this year. So that's according to the decals with the uh, nice instrument cluster in there. And here we have our Hudson hood and a little, oh, that's the gas filler door right there. So let's bring this up to the camera. Again, look at the nice detail on that dash. All your buttons and your instruments there, your radio, and then the heater would be glued into that little position there. There's that Hudson hood. Again, there's another little seam line here that you got to watch for. It's just above the lettering. So make sure you sand that down and smooth it all out. Now, what's under the hood? Oh, we do actually have a little bit of a, well, slightly textured surface there for a mat. There are some mold marks in here which need to be removed. I'm not too sure about that one. That does... Yeah, that's some mold mark. Remove it. <laughs> Get rid of those. Nice little spots for those hood... Uh, braces as well as the hood hinges toward the back so again really excellent work going on here real wonderful from mobius here we have our sun visors and our drum brake backs we also have the handles for those seats and our king pins and then the front suspension pieces as well as our air horns and the master cylinder so let's just bring this up to the camera and take a look again the detail on here is superb you're not going to find a better Hudson than this, unless it's another Mobius Hudson. Oh, and then we have our axle pins sitting here as well. They are plastic, which is a little bit, uh, could be uh, weak compared to metal, but overall, I'm glad they're in there. There are mold buttons back here on the upside of those sun visors, so make sure you get rid of them. Pardon me there. You can also get rid of these ones here on the wheels, just, or the brake backing plates just so that the wheels will turn. Getting a little out of focus there. Okay. But overall, again, excellent work on this and really beautiful stuff. Here we have the parts tree with our wonderful Hudson Twin H Power 6 cylinder. This was a NASCAR racing legend and a really awesome motor until the V8s kind of came in and Hudson sort of got out of the racing program. But overall, again, really awesome. Look at that battery you get there and all the details. It's even got the frost plugs in the side, and look at the oil pan and the top, the head there. Awesome work. Let's bring this up to the camera. 
because my words are failing me here. <laughs> words cannot describe the wonder of the Hudson Twin H powered straight six. Even got the air cleaners in there, the dual carburetors, the intake manifold, everything. All the canisters, the distributor, oil filler tubes, you name it, it's on here and it is awesome. So once again, Mobius has really outdid themselves on this wonderful engine. And here we have the chrome components for our 54 Hudson. And there's one little component that I haven't actually taken out because it's still in the bag. This is the antenna, and I don't want to lose it, so it'll stay in the bag for now. So what do we have here? We've got the front grille and the bumpers, as well as the tail lamps and the headlights, door handles. We have windshield wipers, we've got the side mirrors, we've got the steering column and the steering wheel. Now this wouldn't be all solid chrome. What would be chrome probably are the levers on here, so that would be painted. And of course the outer rim of the steering wheel would be painted as well. There's those Kelsey Hayes style wire wheels. If you want to swap these for the stock wheels, look at the Special, the Hudson Hornet Special, also by Mobius Models. You could interchange those. There's that nice hood emblem, as well as vent, and the front and rear bumpers. So if that's the front and rear bumpers, what is that? <laughs> uh, again, this might be shared with one of the other Hudson models. I'm not 100% sure. So let's just move this off to the side for a moment. Now here, check out those wire wheels. Again, really nicely done. You can see the cross wires in there. I wonder how they molded that. That's actually quite awesome. <laughs> and then we've got our bumpers. I wonder if this is actually for the 52. I think this component might be shared with the 52 Hudson convertible. But again, overall, it looks really, really nice. Mold marks along the back. You can scrape those off. I like to paint these back of the bumpers uh, flat black, so when you flip the car over, it looks more authentic. You don't actually see chrome, you know, everywhere. Now, there's the front grille. Again, really nice work. Yeah, this would be the bumper for the 54s. There's our tail lamps, as well as the bezels for the front headlights and our door handles. And that's the Hudson emblem for the twin H power, which would go in the trunk lid. Again, looking from the back, mold marks, so scrape them off. But overall, again, really wonderful work. And now we've got our steering wheel here. There's the horn ring down below and then the rear view mirror as well as the steering column and you get both of the mirrors and they actually are sunken in here a little bit to make it look like the actual glass from back in the day and our little windshield wipers boy they are kind of short looking but again really wonderful wonderful work and i'm glad that mobius included such a nice wonderful looking chrome parts tree in with their kit actually parts trees so again well worth the price. Next up we have our clear and transparent red components. I'm going to leave these ones in the bag because they are really tiny. So you'd have your parking lamps there, or your front turn signals perhaps, the rear tail lamps, and then we've got our side window glass, as well as our headlights and the windshield and the back window, the rear view window. <laughs> anyway, Again, you can see just how nice this is. They are countersunk in, so they will fit into the body nice and tight, which is always a wonderful feature. Better than some of the old AMT glass where it was just that shape. And then when you put it into the window frame, it actually sits back. So these, all these windows will fit flush into the body, just like they are on the real car. Again, wonderful cross hatch on the headlamps. Make sure those go north and south on your model and not at a 45 degree angle or something weird or a 32.22 degree angle. But overall, again, all this looks wonderful and will really enhance your model. Now here we have the wonderful Hudson Hornet tires. Now these ones don't actually have a name on here like Goodyear or Atlas or Firestone or any of those brands from back in the day. But they do have a really wonderful tread pattern on here, which looks authentic and to scale to real tires, as well as this wonderful Tampo printed white wall tire on here. Again, really excellent work. 
and they even look like real tires because they have the sidewalls in a little gap in between just like down there and that's for that wonderful Kelsey Hayes wheel to fit into so again really awesome work by Mobius okay it's my turn again so this is a really cool little decal sheet it's just a very basic one though so there we've got our instrument panel. We also have the lettering that says Hudson here. And it looks like Mobius was going for sort of like a chromey effect. So if you look at Hornet, is sort of black here and then it turns into white. Now on the real emblem, that would all be chrome, solid across. So I think they were looking for sort of like a shimmery effect going on. Now I thought they said there was two license plates for um, a variation, but all I see is this Indiana sb1105 plate from 54 so again i guess that's all we get look at all the wonderful twin h power logos on here and the under hood details as well as one for the back on the trunk lid again excellent excellent work here even though this is a simplistic decal sheet so i guess i'll go and get started building this model and uh, we'll see you in the next video well, I hope you enjoyed that great unboxing of the 1954 Hudson Hornet Club Coupe. And hopefully you will be able to get one of these for yourself in the future and build it up. And if you want to share the pictures, check out our Facebook page as well, where you can post all your model kits and whatnot. And we can have a look at them and have a lot of fun there. So if you really enjoy this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound that notification bell so every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. And hit that like button so that this video gets more out there, shared out there in the YouTube universe. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and thanks for your support, and have a great 2023.